Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn and today we're going to talk shortly about hydroponics. What it is, how do we do it and how do we manage plant nutrition and plant growth in these systems. Alright, so this is uh, the last lecture of the course SWAE4401 water and nutrient cycling and soil plant environment. So we're gonna talk about, about hydroponic farming, specifically about nutrient management and how, what does it mean for nu nutrient management. So hydroponic, I'm very excited about, about hydroponic. I think hydroponics are great and they are the future. Yeah, they are the future of agriculture. And the more we can do of uh, using hydroponics for growing food, is uh, the better for society because there is less contamination uh, there is less transport of the food uh, and, uh, and it's soilless even though i'm a soil scientist i like the idea of hydroponic being soilless because i think uh, most of the soil should be dedicated for conservation to keep natural uh, ecosystems thriving so the more we concentrate the food production in urban areas the better so the, the natural soils can be occupied by uh, natural ecosystems you yeah? know forests savannas etc i think they are less con uh, le uh, less damaging to the environment when they are occupied uh, they are they're more ecological if the if you have the natural ecosystem and not the the um, uh, agricultural ecosystem in that situation uh, so what it what is hydroponics hydroponics is a, 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 a aquatic based environment so you don't use soil but you might might use some substrate for support for the plants uh, um, you use a nutrient-rich solution balance for uh, uh, optimum uh, plant nutrition and it, this solution is applied directly to the roots. Yeah? Uh, as I was mentioning before, the substrate will only uh, uh, promote the support, the physical support of the plants. So plastic, foam, sand, etc. Yeah? There's a variation of this called vertical farming where you can also uh, uh, provide artificial light and then you can stack up these hydroponic systems vertically and that, that optimizes the, the, the area usage, yeah? the area usage. Uh, so you can also, as you're providing artificial light, you don't need to provide light in all the wavelengths, uh, just the wavelengths that, uh, that are optimum for plant growth. So blue lights and red lights they will be uh, blue lights will be more adequate for using in this situation so the plants will use it more efficiently and do more photosynthesis with less energy use yeah so what are the systems uh, hydroponic systems that we have they, they, they differ mainly about how do you apply this nutrient solution uh, to the roots and how do you keep those roots uh, with enough air so you don't want to create an anoxic condition for the roots some roots are more tolerant to anoxic conditions other less but either way the majority of the crops are adapted to have uh, 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 oxygen at the, at the roots for the, the, the respiration processes so uh, the, 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 the way you provide this nutrient solution for the plants is uh, uh, actually um, the, the way it's the, it's how you classify this, this different system yeah the first one is deep water culture system where you have an air stone like you have for any aquarium for example and uh, this uh, air stone system here will be uh, will be you know creating oxygen oxygenation of the water as you do it for fish in in in, in aquarium for example so the, in this way, the roots can be directly submerged into the nutrient-rich solution. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The weak system, they have some very high capillarity uh, uh, fiber that is uh, uh, dumped inside the nutrient-rich solution and the roots are in contact with this, uh, with this um, high capillarity material. And this high capillary material, as the, as the, 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 the solution dries up in, in the region where the plant's roots are, 
then the, just by capillarity, the solution has been taken up. This is a weak system, yeah, weak. Um, these are very useful and, uh, uh, and, and uh, can be managed in large scales also. Uh, so we have uh, other systems which are drip systems. The drip systems, they are constantly dripping the nutrient-rich solution into the roots and normally have calcinated clays here uh, uh, to support the plants. And this works really well also. It's just a normal drip irrigation, like a fertigation system, but only that uh, you are um, uh, dripping uh, the nutrient solution all the time. Yeah? And this is being recirculated and reapplied for the plants all the time. The aeroponic system is a, another variation. It's very popular for vertical farming also. The aeroponic system is spraying this nutrient solution with uh, micro sprinklers in where the root systems are. Yeah? And these aer uh, aeroponic systems, they are uh, also usually associated with vertical farming systems and uh, they're uh, very popular online at this at this time yeah um, nutrient film techniques which is just like pumping and using the the natural gradients uh, for for the flow and and, uh, and uh, this is um, very straightforward and ebb and flow where you have pulses of uh, fill the re recipients with nutrient solution and let it uh, uh, drain and do that uh, uh, two or three cycles per hour and let these uh, cycles give enough nutrient and water for these plants. Okay. So in resume, what are the, about the pros and cons of hydroponic? You know, if you have uh, uh, hydroponic, you are independent of growing seasons because normally this is done indoors and this, uh, this can be have a, a, you can have many more crop cycles throughout the year than you would have in outside conditions. Uh, the, the, the yields are much higher, it can be 10 times higher than normal uh, uh, agriculture, so that makes up for the high use of, of, of labor in area, so you just a smaller area but very intensive, so you have a high energy use in uh, the, the and uh, very intensive in labor also. Uh, the uh, area usage is very small, energy use is very high. Um, nutrient efficiency, this is what I love about it. It's, you know, nutrient pollution is one of the, the main concerns of everybody that studies uh, 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 plant nutrition. So nitrogen uh, losses and phosphorus losses from soils in, into waters, they are a big concern of agriculture these days. And then um, in, in the hydroponic system, you can completely avoid that by reusing the same nutrient solution and just correcting that for the nutrient, uh, for, the, uh, for the nutrient concentrations in that solution. I will tell you how just in, in a bit. Uh, so environmental pollution is very low. You can, even the pesticide use is uh, completely uh, almost uh, nothing that you use because of these uh, indoor conditions you can have, you can almost completely avoid uh, um, these uh, pests happening and diseases happening on the hydroponic systems. And when you have it, you can have localized application in it. Normally the, 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 in this side, it's, it's even uh, better than, than organic farming in a way because you have uh, you're protecting completely the plants for any pathogens that you might have or um, whereas in organic forms you might have some, uh, uh, you know, contamination from uh, manures and so on. Uh, pest control is, you rarely use pesticides as I was saying, but in, the, in, the, in conventional farming the produce is usually highly uh, contaminated by pesticides residues. No no weed control needed, so that's the cost less that you have on the system. So the cost per area is in conventional, conventional form is low comparing to hydroponics, so you need to have high value cash crops here. Um, and uh, although the cost per area is very high, you, ha you are mitigated by the, the productivity that can be even 10 times higher sometimes. So depending on what you're doing and, and how easy it is to do your hydroponics, uh, hi commercial hydroponic systems are the way to go and the better way of producing uh, these types of crops.
uh, the, the greens are for sure much better when you, uh, when you produce them with hydroponics than conventional farming. This is not organic, by the way, because you use a chemical fertilizer. Even though you might not even use a best science, but the chemical fertilizers uh, uh, are not allowed in organic farming. Uh, the appearance of the produce is usually very superior, much superior to conventional farming. Um, uh, the water use efficiency is very high. Uh, it is not feasible for extensive crops like wheat or potatoes or, you know, so extensive crops is still a limitation on how you use it. Uh, but for, for uh, uh, vegetables uh, in uh, high yield uh, uh, crops that are uh, confined in small areas, hydroponics are very, um, suitable for this you know? uh, you can grow in in urban areas also which in conventional farming is harder to do it's possible uh, so you have urban farming like gar uh, home gardening but uh, hydroponics can be done in large scale in urban areas whereas uh, you know uh, 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 home gardening is is a limited production it's more like um, uh, subsistence you know? so the the labor is one of the advantages. you need a lot of labor in hydroponics because it, these things are of, of high rotation and high yields and so you need to be rotating these systems all the time in, in harvesting every day um, so this labor is one of these the advantages you need a lot of labor but this is natural if you have high yields you need uh, you need to uh, commercialize this and, and package and harvest. This is uh, uh, expected from having high yields. So the land degradation in, in conventional, conventional farming is very high and whereas in, in hydroponics, it's uh, very small and it's limited for the, the area usage by this uh, uh, construction of these sites. You know? So this is all the, the the pros and cons of hydroponics and now I will talk to you a little bit more about the nutrient uh, management on these uh, farming systems which is straightforward like a Hoagland solution yeah like a Hoagland solution so this is the, the formulas for a Hoagland solution you have here on the on the on the on the um, on the screen and uh, it, it's just that you will dilute chemicals in, in, in different proportions in order to create a balanced solution that gives all the nutrients in the adequate concentrations for the plants. Yeah? Uh, and here you will, you will see the, the, the concentration that you have <clears throat> by adding these different chemicals in this different amount is uh, you get a, around uh, 220 ppm of, uh, of nitrogen, 235 of potassium, uh, 160 of calcium, 62 of phosphorus, 32 of sulfur, etc., and so on and so forth, with all the list of the, 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 the essential nutrients that you need for plant growth. Yeah? Even the ones that are not essentials, you can include also for a better performance. Yeah? Uh, the, the, the solutions of the macronutrients, they are done independently and they are applied independently when you correct daily the... the the concentration of nutrients in your hydroponic system. The commercial versions of this, they separate, they have a nutrient solution which contains almost everything except for the magnesium sulfate and the calcium nitrate. So the calcium, uh, calcium nitrate and the magnesium sulfate, they are done separately because of precipitation. Yeah? Uh, of, for example, phosphorus can uh, easily precipitate if you have uh, a high concentration of phosphates and um, uh, calcium and magnesium in alkaline solutions, this uh, will be uh, a problem. Yeah, precipitation could be a problem. So you have to apply this independently. So commercial uh, 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 nutrient solutions that you already buy or the sounds for hydroponic systems, they will come like solution A, B and C, which will contain all the nutrients except for the magnesium sulfate and the, and the calcium nitrate, which will be applied separately. Um, uh, as you apply them on the on, on high dilution on your systems, this will not have precipitation issues anymore because of this uh, 
uh, high dilution that you have. So there's two things you have to consider here. How do you correct the concentration of the solution on the, that the plates are experiencing? The usual method that you use that you have for uh, correcting this concentration is by measuring the EC. So the EC is an indirect measurement of the salinity. So the higher the EC, the more the concentration of salts. The salts that you have, these are the salts that you have on the solution. So the lower the EC, you can just top up the, the, these, uh, with these solutions and this proportion until you get the EC that you are targeting. And normally your target EC is about 1.3 to 1.6. And this would mean that you have about 1000 ppm of this, uh, the, of, uh, this uh, combined salt in the, in the solution. So if you just target 1.3, between 1.3 and 1.6 uh, deci Siemens per meter, then you will always arrive into this uh, uh, good concentration of nutrients. So you can every day measure the EC, and based on the EC, you can top up with the solutions to have these uh, nutrients replenished. So the plants will always have optim optimum conditions of these nutrients uh, um, for them. You can, if you do it yourself every month or so, you can come back and test. Uh, for different nutrients and if you see that you were creating some imbalance and then you can correct that imbalance individually by applying more of each one of these if you need or less of one of these if one is accumulating yeah if one is being highly depleted you can just apply more to correct the solution if one is being accumulated you can uh, then suspend for one day or so and then you can balance this up by just measuring this monthly or every two months and then you can have these solutions eternally being recirculated and supplying the plants with these um, with these nutrients. So this is a very it's a 100% efficiency nutrient usage. So this is uh, what we dream of uh, uh, for uh, talking about the new, uh, plant nutrition. You don't want to waste any of these salts. You don't want to waste this because it's a contaminant for waters and and, and for the atmosphere. Uh, so actually you want to have the system working as, uh, as, as uh, efficient as possible. And hydroponics is the best situation where you will reach the highest efficiency of nutrient usage. So uh, this in short is what I wanted to bring for you today. Oh, there's a last thing that I have to mention is we need to always balance the correct for pH also in the system. It's not here, but you, um, you can, if you see that your by recirculating the solution to the plant, the solution is being acidified. Uh, then you use uh, um, potassium hydroxide for uh, uh, raising the pH. Uh, and, and if the if it's uh, uh, being uh, um, uh, alkalinized, then you can use uh, an acid, uh, sulfuric acid, for example, for um, lowering this pH, yeah, lowering this pH. So you correct for pH and your target pH is six. About, uh, you can tolerate between 5.5 and 6.5, it's fine. Uh, but you don't want extreme, uh, extremely low pHs or extremely high pHs in this situation because of problems of uh, unavailability of some of these nutrients for plants. Uh, so you, can, you have to also correct the pH on these hydroponic systems, it's very important. All right, this is all I had to bring for you in hydroponics and um, we, uh, have, I hope you enjoyed the course and we are going to have revision uh, lectures during the final weeks of the course. Thank you very much.